Suppose you're wondering what's in here. Well, allow me to tell you. Sure, quite a few of you recognize this bag. It's the Peter McKinnon Nomadic. Pretty good, pretty good. I, uh, I'm very happy with it. It's doing very well on my travels. Those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I was on a 5D Mark II, which I finally gave up in November of last year. If you've been following me on Instagram, then you'll know I've switched over to an R6 Mark II, which I'm currently filming this on, so I cannot show it to you can, however, show you my lenses. So, you've got a 24 to 105. This guy's excellent for just whacking on the camera, wandering around, snapping away. It's got such a good focal range. It's my daily go-to, really, that one. And then, you have this beast, which... I do wonder if it was entirely necessary to buy this, but you know. Incredibly handy for wildlife, shooting objects off in the distance. The compression you get out of this lens is absolutely stunning. A lot of people often refer to these kinds of things as the compensation lens. Pretty easy to see why. And on the camera itself, I've got a 15 to 35, which has got that. As you can see, it's got a nice wide field of view. So 100 to 500, 24 to 105. 15 to 35. I've got pretty much the full range that I need. Next up, we have GoPros. I'm going to move this one to the side because it's getting a special mention, that one. Not for good reason either. Here you have Hero 11, Hero 12. The Hero 11 is currently sitting in the GoPro mic. Not overly impressed with this. I've used it five times. Two of those five times it hasn't worked. One of those times the audio quality was terrible. The other times it was just me chatting a load of nonsense walking around on the street, to be honest. But but it, it did the job there, so I'll give it that. But um, yeah, it does seem to have its problems. It also feels very cheap and flimsy. But my gripes with GoPro will be saved for another time because we got to talk GoPro. Here at 12, don't get me wrong, the footage quality out of this is awesome. It's a lot more akin to what you expect to see out of the GoPro adverts themselves, which is great. Love that, that they've finally done that. Again, I have my gripes. This might be the last GoPro I buy. We'll get onto that another time. A special mention for the Hero 11 Mini. Hello? A special mention for the Hero 11 Mini. Um, it's, it's, it's pointless. I bought it because I thought there might be some angles that require a, a slightly smaller GoPro than, uh, than the other two. But you can see the footprint of them isn't massively different. Yeah, I, I haven't used this. It's usually the GoPro I hand off to other people um, and just let them go around snapping whatever they want to snap with it. Uh, battery life's terrible. Uh, the menu system, you control everything from this tiny screen here, which is uh, frankly embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, bit useless, I wouldn't recommend it, won't be buying another one. Now, my penultimate camera, if you will, is my phone. I bought an iPhone 15 Pro, mostly because the camera on it is absolutely insane. You get raw max, which means it's shooting 48 megapixels, I believe it is. You can then take that into Lightroom. You can dial up all the colors, everything you want out of it. Really, really brilliant and handy second camera. Highly recommend if you can afford to splash out on it. But I found this was probably a better alternative to buying another camera body. That seemed a little bit unnecessary to me. So this is great. The video on it's fantastic. 4K up to 60 FPS. You've got a wide angle lens, a 35mm 
and a 15 times zoom, which is quite insane from a phone. Let's see what, it's getting quite warm in here. I have to turn off the air conditioning when I'm filming because otherwise it comes through on the microphones and it's, it's a nightmare. I bought a new drone. Yeah, the DJI Mini 2 was incredible. I really, really loved that drone. Gave me a great chance to, to learn how to fly, how to film. And this is just the next level of it, to be honest. I do have a couple of gripes. There's a couple of things on here that aren't quite as good as they were on the Mini 2. However, overall, brilliant, fantastic experience. Now I went with the Pro model. So you get this remote, which has obviously the screen on it, which is a lot brighter than your mobile phone screen. So those times that I was flying the Mini 2, and I couldn't quite see my phone screen because maybe the sun was shining in on it. That problem is now solved. Also means I've eliminated part of the setup. It means I can just get up in the air a lot quicker, which is really, really handy. And obviously with the Pro Bundle, you get your three batteries, which each one is 37 minutes of flight time. If you need more than that, I don't quite know what you're doing. You probably shouldn't be using a mini drone. You should be using something a bit more advanced. Awesome piece of kit very happy with it. Now with all this equipment you're going to need something to edit on right? You're going to need something to be able to handle all the 4k, in some cases 5k high frame rates. So I edit on this. It's just a small 13 inch MacBook Pro M1 chip if I'm not mistaken. I do wish I'd gone for the slightly bigger model because this does tend to throttle up quite hard. The fans start turning up can even make the room quite warm, which is uh, quite something. Good little laptop, saves a lot of weight. Got a nice little D-brand skin on it to try and keep all the scratches off. And not only do you need something good to edit on, you're gonna need somewhere to store all of it because Apple makes you pay through the nose for higher storage counts. So for that, I've got a lacy drive, which is meant to be incredibly rugged. Yeah, it's been brilliant. I can edit straight off of it, which is fantastic. Should keep all my stuff pretty safe given that it's rubberized and yeah lacy good hard drive in terms of audio recording i'm using the dji mics the original edition because dji went ahead and released the mic too just as i was gearing up to to write a review on these guys now these are brilliant because i've got them sitting just there so i've got dual channel audio coming in should sound pretty good but as well as that you can just clip it straight to your shirt. You can even use the magnets on the back so that you can hide it away. People won't then know that you're wearing a microphone, which is fantastic. We love options. I'll show you quickly how all of that looks in the camera bag because it all fits incredibly nicely in a very manageable backpack. That about concludes everything that's in my camera bag. There's loads of other little bits and bobs, things that go with the GoPro things that are attached to my phone, whatever. They're not very exciting. More just peripheral pieces of kit, really. Everything I've shown you here today, I'd like to make videos on individually. You know, camera, lenses, GoPros, DJI mic, of which I may have to buy the second edition. Damn it, DJI. Naturally, I'd like to make a review of the DJI Mini 4 because it's pretty cool. But for now, I just wanted to give an overview of the kind of equipment I'm using as it's changed rather dramatically from when I last made a video, to be honest. I was shooting on a Canon 600D, um, struggling to rack the focus now. Now look at me. Yeah, cheers, Canon. I'd also be interested in making some tutorials for you guys, Lightroom, Photoshop, how I capture the kind of images I do. If you're interested in that kind of thing, leave a comment, drop a like, let me know if you're interested and I will, I will get on it. Until then, I need to get that air conditioning back on, so stay humble, stay true, keep shooting. Peace.